Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Classic Leet Reviews. I'm the new guy in town, Jeremy, and I'll be doing some PSP reviews for my boys from time to time. So, that being said, let's do this. Uh, first things first, before we watch this today, you will definitely have to channel your inner super nerd because today I'll be reviewing Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together. Tactics Ogre is a uh, tactical role-playing game. It was re originally released in Japan in 1995 on the Super Famicom, which we know in the States as the Super Nintendo. It later made its way over here at 96 and 97 on the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation 1. Since then, there have been a couple uh, additional titles on the N64 and Game Boy Advance that you know, really weren't very well, well received. Let Us Cling Together, however, is not a remake of the original 1995 game. It's actually more of a revamped and improved version that has been expertly done on the PSP by the exact same team that developed the original in 1995. So the story of Tactics Ogre kind of throws you in the midst of uh, tragic and violent times in the land of Valeria. Warring factions and, and an intense class struggle really do a good job of painting the uh, enveloping uh, idea of how far war really reaches. Uh, you start the game with your sister and a friend named Vice. As, and as the game progresses, you pick up and, and lose partners in your little crew uh, of war, um, your little uh, order of knights, which I, you get to name your order, and I, I, of course, name mine the order of balls. Always nice seeing that printed on the screen. It's just funny to me. Basically, the whole game centers around you being the leader of a group of liberators, each who has their own pros and cons and personal motivations for what's going on. Uh, the narrative of the story is, is really the star uh, there's a lot of quality twisting and, and uh, intertwining that really can let you go anywhere, pick a bunch of different ways to go through the game. And there is a lot of narrative, but not really enough to bore you. It's a pretty interesting narrative. Um, so let's go on to the gameplay and the controls. Let me start by saying that Tactics Ogre is a hardcore game that will require time and effort to fully immerse yourself into it and get the full experience out of it. As you can see on the screen here, gameplay is your classic turn-based role-playing game battle on an isometric playing field. You move square to square. The members of your group are different, customizable, and upgradable classes. One cool thing that has been added to the PSP version versus the 1995 version is that as your classes upgrade, Every new person, everybody that is in your group of that class upgrades as well, regardless of whether they were working or not. Um, so, you know, even if you pick them up late or in the game, you know, you're five hours in the game and you're at rank 10, those people coming in are going to be ranked 10 as well. So that's cool. Uh, throughout the game, there is a tarot card theme, as you can see. What you see on the screen here is actually questions that they ask you before you even start your game. Believe it or not, when I went through the second time, these are different cards than what I played the first time. These cards play a big part in the magical elements of the game, and they're earned through, a bat uh, through battle and can increase your stats and cast spells. You also have more traditional weapons at your disposal, uh, you know, swords and, and stones to throw and bow and arrow. Also, there are special abilities and finishing moves that you gain uh, that you can use. It will really take some time to start freeing up classes and, and magical skills. Uh, you know, it'll take a good few hours of playing before you get to that. Uh, you're presented with choices throughout the game, which will affect which part of the branching storyline you'll follow. This type of storytelling has obviously become a mainstay in role-playing games, you know, Fallout 3 and all that type of stuff. Um, Square Enix has added a multiplayer experience to Tactical Ogres. Uh, the one thing about multiplayer is you will have to start a single player because the multiplayer imports your army or your, your knights from single player into multiplayer before you uh, to do that. So that's kind of fun. Warning though, if you haven't beaten the game yet, you might end up spoiling some of the story. Um, go on to the controls. At first, the controls seem pretty daunting, and they are. But after a while, I found that the controls were still daunting. Um, the menus in the game, both in and out of battle, are extremely deep with choices and customizable options. Uh, one thing is many of the PSP buttons have been given multiple functions, so it makes it a little more difficult to remember what does what and get a good feel for the game. So the learning curve seemed pretty steep to me. You can obviously choose to control the entire army by yourself, or you can let the AI do it. Uh, I am not a wizard at 
tactical role playing game, so I let the uh, AI take care of mine, and I just controlled my dude. I found that you know to first start out, that was the easiest for me. Expert players are probably just going to want to ignore this, though, um, but I found it to be extremely helpful. Good things about the controls is that the isometric play, even though the isometric playing field can be difficult at times, the PSP is fixed that mostly. It allows you to zoom in and out and also around the batter field, which gives you a broader view if you really want to take on, you know, control everybody and strategize your attacks. So that's a cool thing that they added to um, the PSP version. Graphics, as you can see, nothing special about them, but that's kind of the art style that they went for. Like I said, it's a remake of the 95 game, so they kept the original old school awesomeness sprite type graphics of those early years. The attack graphics, though, are, are very crisp. Um, the modern graphical moments, such as the end of the battle or the gaming intro, uh, they are very well done. They're beautiful and flowing and very good. Um, as you can see right here, here's a back end of game thing here, uh, which shows you the spoils. Uh, vivid color palette. The magic graphics are pretty impressive, especially compared to the 1995 version. These graphics, they've really amped up the, the magic spells. I didn't get to see a bunch of them. I only played a little bit, so I can just imagine what the ones are further on. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty good. But the overall art direction, um, and they've kept it relatively simple. Like I said, they're revamping the original. Sound, the original soundtrack by Mr. Hitashi Sakamoto has been artfully remastered. I mean, he's no Justin Bieber, but it, it's truly phenomenal and really sets the mood and aura for your fights and trials. In fact, let's give a listen to it here. I think it's kind of impressive. I mean, I, I have a fun time with it. Um, you really should use the earphones, though. The earphones really give you the sense. That's where it's best. The speaker in the PSP just doesn't do it justice. So overall, pros of the game, great narrative, great art direction, it's an excellent, deep, rich role-playing game experience, and it's on a handheld for those that want it. There's not many of those types of games on a handheld. The cons, uh, convoluted controls, it's going to take you a while to get used to the controls. That's the biggest downfall that I found with the game. So, but, you know, that's just an opinion. I'm not an expert at, at these types of games, so it's not one to just pick up. Um, overall, tactical role-playing games in general are definitely one of the acquired tastes. It's kind of one of those deals that if you didn't find yourself growing up playing them, then a lot of times people just don't get into them later in life. They're definitely an acquired taste. But I found myself actually playing this just to get used to uh, just to increase my abilities and follow the narrative. It's an ex excellent tactical role-playing game, worthy of more than the PSP, I think. It should have been a console game. But us at Classic Elite here highly recommend it if you're looking for a game that will constantly challenge your mind.